All right. So uh, thank you for joining me, everybody. Wing Chun on this Monday, July 13th. And um, there's a number of things going on. So without chewing up too much time, let's bow the class in. Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and Dog Brothers, Japanese. And um, the Wing Chun session today will be an hour. We're gonna go from five to 6 p.m. my time. And then JKD will be 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. my time. If anybody on here, if, if you can't stay on the whole time, just sign off and no worries whatsoever. Um, we will stick to a hard stop right around seven. Um, if I do my usual Guru Brian thing, it'll only be for a minute or two, but I'm looking to end right around seven, um, which should give us plenty of time. So before we get going with technique, let me just say that this class today will be um, very much focused on the individual practitioner without a partner. And then the JKD session, um, my wife should be home by that point. And uh, what I'd really like to do is go through with Simo Jean, um, definitely all seven of the entries in the trapping in the JKD. And I'd like to try to show you some of the other trapping requirements in JKD. Okay, so a few other moments here of information, and then we're going to train. Um, this is technically the last Monday public complimentary Zoom class because uh, I've created a plan by the end of this week to finish and fulfill my commitment of 100. Teaching, recording, and uploading 100 complimentary martial arts classes for anybody who might need them. Um, by the time we get to around 3 p.m. on Saturday of this week, the 18th of July, uh, that commitment will be fulfilled. Those 100 hours hopefully will be all uploaded to YouTube by Sunday and for everybody to use for as long as they want. Um, the two parties that are in this class are both members, so we will proceed with members only classes, so you're all good to go. Um, and I will kind of walk you through that transition in the members portal and on social media, but it'll, it'll be really good. Um, what else do you need to know? And then we'll train. Wednesday of this week, we're gonna do the same thing where Kid Persist is an hour like usual, C-Lot will be a full hour, and then uh, Filipino martial arts will be a full hour. That will be the 15th of July. The, um, the 16th of July is Thursday. We're going to do a special four-hour session. Wing Chun, JKD, C-Lot, Filipino martial arts. We're going to do each one of those for an hour. That will be 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., Eastern time. And there's no kid persist that day. Um, if any of my kid persist students want to take the adult classes or they want to train with their parents, it's all digital anyways, so it'll really be fine. And then the only other thing to know, everybody, is on Saturday, July 18th, um, I will teach the final four hours of my 100 that will be from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. That will wrap up the 100 hours. I don't really know what I'm teaching on that day, if I'm being honest and transparent. Um, and I'm very open to suggestions. If there are specific things you'd like to see, please, um, you know, send me those, email me those, private message me those, let me know. The only other thing, I know this is outside of Wing Chun, um, and then I promise you we'll train after this. This Friday, July 17th, um, I'm teaching a two-hour Zoom workshop on stick fighting. Um, I'm being hosted by Pakiti Tercia 
as an organization presenting the workshop with the blessing of Grand Tuhan Leo Gahi um, and really being hosted directly with all the logistics being handled by uh, Agalon Jade Gahi, his daughter, who has kind of headed up the leadership of Pakiti Tercia for uh, the United States and Canada, and she's done an amazing job. That is a $20 workshop for two hours. And the only thing, I know it's not Wing Chun, the only thing I would say, if you can set yourself up in a space where you can actually swing some sticks and move and sweat a little bit, that would be the best possible uh, logistical setup in which to take that workshop. Okay, that is a lot of info. Let's train and let's warm up. So um, we're gonna have our feet, up, well, in this class, I'm sorry, let's use our, let's get ourselves in our formalized training stance. And once we're there, hands up, and we're gonna make fists in both hands, and we're just gonna do 20 sets really quickly with no body rotation. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Good. Um, so, and now at this point, let's lift our left foot and stand on our right foot, hands up. We're just going to do one set of ten. Try not to have balance checks, but I might have them. It's not the end of the world. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Set that left foot down. Lift your right foot. And ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very nice. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, and then you don't need to get in your formal stance. You can just stand feet about shoulder width apart and, um, let's have our hands up, fingers open with the left hand in front, make fists and actually, uh, with, with the left hand in front, we're going to go to our left and one open center two open right three open center four open left five open center six open right seven open center eight open left nine open center finish up ten okay so um just some basic warm-ups to get us going and I want to spend more time with this class talking about the forms and going over some ideas. Um, of course, that, that empty handed forms, you don't need anything and you don't need a partner and so on. Um, but I, I want to go beyond that. But before I do that, um, let's, let's, let's uh, I'm sorry, start with our feet together. Hands come up. Don't touch your ribs, bend your knees, open your toes and your heels, left hands on top, right hands in front, bring it back, left hand arms, knuckles down until you execute, Tan Sao, Kun Sao, Sao Kun, this arms, right hand, vertical punch, showing hand, circling hand, and retract, left Tan Sao comes out, Hoon. It starts to come in, no rotation of the body. Drop this in a fuchs out, push it back out. And it circles in a small circle back up to that Wu out. Two. Three fuchs outs. Pak sao, jip jern, tan sao. Kun Sao, Sao Kun. Okay, 
Right showing hand is coming out, circling into guarding hand. Drops into this resting hand position. One, two. Again, going a little bit faster than traditional. Three, slapping hand, vertical palm strike, showing hand, circling hand, retracting hand. Session two, escape from grabs. Left hand pushes down at your side. Right hand pushes down to your side. My palms are open. I know they exited the frame. Up so that you're basically touching your kidneys with the back of your hands and then pushing down, palm down behind you. Pushing in front of you, coming to this position with your left hand on top. Opening into this double sets out, returning with your right hand on top. Circle out, palms facing one another, palms facing up pushing down with the heels of your hands, almost bouncing into the eyes, going down lower with the heels of your hands and your hands come up and return to where you started. Session two, that was escape from grabs. Session three, multiple strikes with the same hand. So pox out, withdraw, wander, circle this, done. So slapping hand, bring it back, Palm strike with the fingers down, circle it, retract it. Okay, tonsau, gonsau, tonsau, hunsau, low wandering, back up to ton, hunsau, sau kun. High, showing hand, low, back to high showing hand, circle into a low palm strike with your fingers down, back to showing hand, circle, retract this. Bong sau, tonsau, Wander, circle it, or uh, hun sao sao kun. Okay, so tying up hand, showing up, a uh, showing hand, palm strike with the fingers down, circling hand, retracting. Palm down, left hand, palm up, right hand wipes it. Switch, switch three. Hold this center line with your right hand on that third wipe. Left vertical fist, right vertical fist, left vertical fist. Showing hand, circling hand, retracting hand, turn slightly to your left, right foot meets the left, and push down, okay? And if you're like Conrad, you come on, Brian, like, like if you know it, you know it, but that time I wanted to go a little, <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, that time I wanted to go a little bit slower and break it down um, for you, okay? So, I'm, I'm just going to say this and then we'll get into some other things here. With kata, and now, I'm, now I'm using a Japanese term, but I'm using a Japanese term because most people kind of know what I mean when I say a kata, right? A, a form. Um, in Silat, it's a juru. A juru is an upper body kata. A lanka is a lower body kata. You're talking about systems of practice for the solo practitioner, especially when even maybe pencil and paper were hard to come by. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, contemporary technology is awesome. Contemporary knowledge is awesome it gets very easy to get really satisfied with yourself though. The old, 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 old gener you know, generations ago, the old masters, they weren't stupid. Kata, forms, jurus, lankas, how you have this advanced progressive movement that you're trying to learn that's showing you particular martial arts concepts. How are you gonna practice when you don't see your instructor? And kata forms, jurus, lankas, and so on. If you have any other words from any other system, but you know what I'm talking about, those are all the methodologies, okay? And I, I mean, I would take it 
a step further. If you have a heavy bag, and I'm gonna go in and out of Wing Chun here in the next few moments, verbalizing this, okay, real quickly. And I'm, I'm not showing off, I'm showing you this because I used to use this methodology when I couldn't go out to my garage when I had a heavy bag to work on this. So Thai Boxing Association 15 count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay? Um, and then there's a 17 count, and then there's 18A, and 18B, and 18C. Like anything else, when I started my journey in Thai boxing, like all the other martial arts I've ever studied and will study, I was really excited. I really liked it. I want to learn this. I want to get good at this. I want to invest my time and energy and become competent, at least competent. Maybe good is too, <laughs> too much, but at least competent, right? So if there's a bunch of compound movements, well, how are we going to remember them? Well, doing them in the air by yourself is sometimes a really valid strategy if that's what's available to you. And again, those old masters weren't stupid. And you might look at it and say, well, that's so dumb. Today, we'll just get together and we'll pad up and we'll test it and we'll pressure test. And cool, good on you. Like that's a good methodology too. But what if you can't? Or what if, you, what if you get a new job and you have to move? And later when society is open, you scour the internet for training partners, but just frankly, nobody's at your level or nobody's at a level to even be beneficial to you. What are you gonna do? Okay, um, so I know in contemporary martial arts forms, form is a four letter word, Kata is a four letter word, okay? If, if you have perspective and you understand what it's good for, there's nothing to be afraid of. The only thing that I, I mean, and I would, I would, I would completely agree with what I like to call the anti-cult martial arts cult. When they say, well, if I just do Selim Tao in the air, for years and years and years, I'm going to end up with a beautiful Selim Tao, but that isn't necessarily going to teach me how to fight. I agree. I, I agree with that. Okay. I mean, you might be that one in a million classical martial arts practitioner that takes away application. You just see it like how Mozart just, just saw the keys and knew how to play. You might, if you might be that one in a million, but odds are just doing the forms isn't going to make you combative. The only other thing, though, are there other benefits besides just being combative? Yes, absolutely. And we've talked about that. Selim Tao is all about structure. And we've spent so much of our 16, 7, whatever we're up to, 16 or 17 weeks in these public Zoom classes in this offering, talking about the drill modality. Even in my kids program today, I had, I had one of my participants, he's an awesome martial artist, but he was doing, he was doing that. Now, okay, stop. Like there's no rotation. It's you work that enough in other martial arts. We wanna understand center line, dominating center line with our Wing Chun structure and that's, what we're getting from Selim Tao, and that's what we're getting when we're in that drill modality, okay? Um, okay, so second form, Chum Q. And since I haven't spent weeks building to this, I'm probably just gonna keep my explanation in English for the sake of anybody who might watch this. And um, I'm so sorry, give me 30 seconds, everybody, and I will return right away and we'll do that.
Okay, sorry, thank you very much. Okay, so I wanna give you the best possible vantage. And so Chum Q, we are gonna start developing our movement, our transportation systems. And I've been very upfront with everybody who's been training with me or watched any of my videos during all of this. Um, I am very grateful for Family Martial Arts Academy Living Room dish Edition. We've done some incredible work out of this space. Um, as a martial arts training hall, it is not entirely adequate. So there may be parts of this where I have to reset and move a little bit because I run out of space. I will always cue you that those additional movements are not actually part of the form. And again, we'll make the best out of uh, the situation with what we have. So feet are going to start together. Hands are going to rise up. This is going to look very familiar. You're going to bend your knees, open your toes, and open your heels. It's the same opening as what you did before. Left hands on top, right hands in front, not touching my ribs, knuckles down for a moment, left hand, boom. This is all the same, right hand arms. As that comes in, this executes and comes back. All right, now we are in the chum cue specific portion of the form. We're really gonna break this down into three sessions or sections. And session one, you have to repeat all of it on both sides. So just stick with me. Hands come out and just try and, and you'll have Conrad in the screen as well and but my guess is he probably knows this as well um you can look at both of us all right you're gonna flex your wrists one two you're gonna shoot your left hand in front of the right and turn to your left you're gonna switch arm come down and arm your hands and switch and i'm going to my right when I was on my left, my left hand was on top. Now that I'm on my right, my right hand is on top. I come down to my side and I switch again. Okay, so let's go back and let me break that down. And again, honesty and transparency. I haven't taught this in a while. I've certainly run it and done it on my own, but I haven't like broken it down and verbalized it in a while. So we just finished the opening, right? One, two, shoot the left, turn to your left. Fingered, it's that same Lan Sao position that we worked in the second session of Wing Chun. We just turn profile. Fingertips are even with your elbows. The way that I remember it, the left hand was in front when I, on that third beat, I turn to my left and that means my left hand has to be on top. I come down to my side, double palms up, and I switch. Let, now I'm, I went to my right, if this is true front, so my right hand is on top. Down to my side, switch. Okay, both hands swing out, palm down. Both hands turn, palm up. Right hand goes basically to my left bicep, one. Switch two, switch three. And then right palm strike, left palm strike, right palm strike, left hand comes back to my side. Make a right fist as you turn. All right. So that arming motion, you're going to arm, turn to the front, and you have a right bong sao with a left ton sao. Back. Two. Back three, back. Okay, now watch. Left hand sets on top, chung choy, sutsao, jopsao, and now, I, I mean, and you're, anybody who watches this, you are free to comment how your lineage does it. This has changed over the years. Most recently, we go under this arm, and then this circles, and the first half, because remember what I said, that, this is session one. We're going to repeat all of those ideas on the other side of the body.
for session one. So now we're, now we're doing it. Ready? One, two, you shoot the right hand in front. So I turn to my right, right hand is on top. Arm it, switch, arm it, switch. So if you need to go back and rewatch what we did on the other side of the body, do so. This is all the same concepts, just on the other side. So double palm down, double palm up. Since I went to my right, my left goes to my right. One, two, three, left, right, left. And my right comes back. Turn, arm it, one. Left bong, right taunt, return, arm it, two, return, arm it, three, return. Place this chung choy, right chung choy, execute as the left hand comes back, suts out, jops out, scoop underneath, circle, and you're done, okay? Uh, and I have some other stuff I want to cover you for you, and since this is all being recorded, if you were like, well, that was really fast, you can go back and watch it again. And since um, I like to leave the comments open, if you have any questions about anything you're seeing, if it doesn't make sense to you, please ask them. And I will do my best to answer your question. Okay, left hand comes up. And the best I can give you is think about this almost like a rising block from karate. Left front kick. And I'm going to settle into this posture. This is the same right bong sao, left ton sao that we were working before. So again, we just finished session one, the B side here. And I drop into this. I bring it down two. I bring it down three. Right uppercut. And then I come down into like a Juts out, ju uh, it juts out into a wusao, come underneath and I finish. I'm gonna repeat that. Right hand, front kick. One, two, three, uppercut, drop, come underneath, circle, and I'm done. So let me repeat that again. I just finished both sides of session one, this time with just less verbalization at speed. Here, one, two, three, there. One, two, three, up, done. Okay. So that's going to be session two. Session three, um, I can make this learnable for you. There is going to be one part that you're just going to need to practice. Last time I was in Georgia to work with Sifu Fong, my Wing Chun instructor, um, one of his senior people who's amazing, uh, Sihi Mike, was showing a couple different options that you have on what's going to be the difficult beat for this. Uh, but but I, I'm just going to do one and give you one thing for you to work on. So you're going to turn left front kick. This is essentially two low bong sows into ton sows. Two and up, three and up. And then as I step in with my right foot, you're shooting these, they both hoon. Okay, now here's the part that I said this was gonna happen. Please excuse me. I'm too close to this couch to actually do the rest of the form properly. So this movement I'm about to do backwards does not exist in the form. Just pretend that I was in an academy space and I had the room to do what I wanted to do. So one, two, three, boom, in with the right foot, these circle. Okay, here's the hard part. Right front kick, 180 into another right front kick. One, two, three, I'm only, and then step in, let me move back again. There, and, and please excuse me, this way I'm in the shot. Those movements back are not in the form. Left foot steps in and I repeat this, okay? Left front kick, side kick. Right front kick, side kick, and I land checking palm down with my left hand. Three more of these. One, two, three. 
three vertical punches, one, two, three, showing hand, circling hand, bring it back. I turn to my left slightly, my right foot meets my left and I'm done, okay? So um, good, I have another 30 minutes or so. Mentally, how do you, obviously way longer. If you were already looking at Selim Tao, going, um, <laughs> that's way harder, okay, clearly. So, um, chum Q, we tend to, you know, they'll, they'll say crossing the bridge, because again, now we're thinking about footwork and our transportation. You can see there's a lot of moving pieces to that. We've abandoned this whole notion of no footwork and you know developing structure okay and and that was really important and remember again i think i've mentioned this before a rumor that circulates all the time um in martial arts is that bruce lee despite what he wrote about the uselessness with air quotes around it of kata did selim tau at least one day uh, one time every day until the day that he died in 1973. That's something we hear very often. Um, just to check in with those basics. All right, it's it's just something that gets floated. So Chum Q, it's a second form. Um, yeah, it's harder and there's movement and there's footwork and there's a lot more pieces to it. And um, that's, that's the second form. Keep in mind, everybody, Wing Chun has six forms, just six. Um, I, in my college, my undergrad days in college, I was a Shaolin Kempo instructor. And so I, I was a student for two years. I already had maybe four years of martial arts before that and was a pretty good student. So I got my like assistant instructor's belt at the end of my second year. The third year, I have a point, just stick with this little anecdote. The third year, my instructor broke away from a large chain, probably that uh, the chain, I'm not going to say the name, but most people would probably recognize it. Um, he opened up his own school and myself and honestly another college age instructor, we did most of the teaching that year. We taught the group classes. We also, part of the structure for membership at that school was you got one, one hour private lesson a week. I also did a ton of the private lesson teaching that was part of everybody's membership. Uh, my point, there were so many forms in Shaolin Kempo. And for a long time, my instructor would, would be like, oh, you want to work on forms X, Y, and Z? Just book Brian for a private. Brian's really got the, the and here, here's, the, here's the purpose, the reason I'm telling you this story. Today, sadly, I don't remember a single one of my Shaolin Kempo form. There were just too many of them, too, I mean, entirely too many of them um, as you progress through the belt level. So Wing Chun, six forms. And so that it's kind of clear in your mind-ish, um, along with the other categories of curriculum that you've seen if you've watched any of these Zoom classes, you know, Selim Tao is like from day one. You're working on Selim Tao from day one. Later, uh, like, like you've seen, excuse me, as you've seen from me, in the very beginning, it's okay just to be able to follow along with it. Later in the curriculum, you're supposed to be able to do Selim Tao on one foot that's a later requirement because you're supposed to be, people usually speed through the first session here, especially because they don't want to lose their balance. You're, you're, Sifu's supposed to be, you know, if there's ba a balance check, you're supposed to fail 
immediately. So people usually go a little bit faster on that one, right? Um, so Selim Tau is with you from day one, like from day one. And then there's the other things that we've been, you've seen some of the first level requirements and then Selim Tau stays with you through um, the remainder of the curriculum. Um, Chum Q, you start the first session around green sash. And, you know, seafood does the same belt order, sash order that I do, right? You start off at white, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple, brown, red, black. Okay, so around green, you're starting to learn the first session. Because remember how once we finish the opening, you know, one, two, left was in front. And we had all of those, I'm kind of speeding through it, right? All of those concepts on starting, I'm going really fast here, starting on the left side. Now, before session one is done, one, two, shoot my right hand. Now I've got to repeat, one, two, three, one, two, three, ugh. I've got to repeat all <laughs> those same concepts before I'm done with session one. So session one, both sides gives you an awful lot to work with. Um, around that time, we also start to learn the first few sessions of the wooden dummy. And this is what I really, I, I knew I wanted to cover Chum Q. And with my remaining 20 minutes with you, since I knew this was going to be a very solo training centric hour, this is what I'd like to do with you. Okay, so just a quick little bit of background, and then we're going to spend a lot of time on this. So, you know, my original, um, I don't think I have his picture up, nor do I care to waste the time. I've shown his picture before. My first instructor in this lineage is Sifu Guru Bud Thompson. He's out of Whittier, California. Um, I, excuse me, a fun fact about Bud, Sifu Bud, is I believe he is, I, I'm pretty sure this is accurate still, he is the, the Sifu, uh, Guru in Asanto's oldest full instructor who's still running a commercial martial arts school, which is pretty cool. Sifu Bud's in his 90s now. Um, and at his school, you learn the dummy all, and again, in his school, we called it 10 sets or 10 sessions or 10, you know, uh, parts like most Wing Chun schools do. And again, no ego. When I, when, when I passed my phase one, I could start training on the dummy. I went at it with everything I had. So every time I would go into Seafood Buds, I would work on the dummy. I didn't have one at home at that time. I would work as much dummy as I could, okay, because I, it was important to me to learn. After a year or so, again, it, most people were like, well, if you want to learn the dummy, Brian's really, he does it all the time. He's really got it down, and you can work with Brian. Um, when I started, I went out, you know, I, I started with Sifu Bud maybe three, four years, four, four or five years before I ever went out to Georgia to work with Sifu Fong and start, you know, becoming a, to, qualified to become an instructor under him. Here's the thing. Sifu Bud's a really great instructor and he teaches everything really well. The way that we did the dummy at Sifu Bud School was entirely different than the way that I learned it from Sifu Fall. And so it took a few years to kind of learn it in the new methodology. So um, I don't have a dummy, everybody. I, I, this is one of the first times in my life for a long time. Uh, I had a dummy for many years after that. I gave it to a student before I moved to New York City. Okay, so 
What we're going to do is we're going to start to learn the first few sessions in the air. And I'm going to show you Sifu's methodology. And if you don't have a dummy, you don't need a dummy. And I'm going to make a really important point if you're working on this material in a few moments. So feet are together. And you would put your arms out so that your fingertips meet the, the base of the dummy. Open your toes and open your feet like usual. You would do this toxow on the dummy arms, and that's the proper distance, and now we're all ready to train. Now, <clears throat> what's so different about the way we do it with Sifu Fong, we break it down into counts. And if you already know it, this is gonna be a little agonizing, but I want you to stick with me so that I can show you the benefit of this approach, okay? So I'll do it a few different times. Um, I don't know, I'll just break it down for you in English, but I'll do it a few different times at a few different angles and you can just follow me, okay? So, and one, this is my left hand, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11, and 12, and 13. Okay, so Conrad's working on his dummy, so you'll have that, and this will be fine. So again, stay with me. So arms straight, now I'm at a new dummy at this angle, and I'll do it multiple angles for you. Open your toes, open your feet, double tox out. Okay, left hand, and one right hand, and two, both hands, and three, and four is a bong sao, stepping in, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11, and 12, and 13. Okay, so I have 13 counts, and, it, and I'll do it again for you. And you're probably noticing that I'm counting the transitory beats, the ands. The ands are very important, and one, and two, and three, and four. Those are very important. So, toes and heels, double tox out. Okay, left hand, and one and two, this is a strike, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11, and 12, and 13. Okay, so once, once we're set up, Left hand, right hand strikes, both hands pull. This left bong sao goes under the arm and you're staying attached to ride this in to this tanda. Six, left hand up, right hand down. You're transitioning across the middle of the dummy. Seven, right hand up, left hand down. Eight. You move to that tanda on the other side. Nine, right hand up, left hand down. 10, 11, you're circling over. 12 and 13. I got off my count just a little bit there. Pardon me. So, and one, and two, and three, and four, five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10. 11 and 12 and 13. So again, slower and one, left hand, and two and three and four and five and six and seven, nice, and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13. Good. And uh, Conrad, on the second to last, on your double jet sow, think about it more 
with your, your like your wrist and your hands. But that looks sharp. That looked pretty sharp. Okay, so and I'm I'm kind of purposefully ignoring everybody a lot of the terminology right now, and I'm just showing you where you want to be. So if you're watching and trying to figure out what I'm doing, like that last set, you can certainly watch what Conrad is doing. Right now, I'm more putting this on video. My goal with, with my remaining 13 minutes here, I just would like you to have a record of the first three sessions. Now, right there, excuse me, in the, in uh, Sifu Fong's organization, we have something a little bit different. So what we're about to move into, most people would call it session two. In our organization, we call it session 1A. Okay, and then when we get to Pox House session, which most people know is session three, that's our session two. And then in this methodology, let me just say this, and then we'll train, but this is for the people kind of in the know. Sessions nine and 10 have been combined, and we end up with eight sessions. So 1A, 1B, 2, 3, um, 4, 5A, and 5B, 6, 7, and 8. That's, that's the way the BOPI or the POPI session we do on both sides, which honestly is something I hadn't seen till I started training with Sifu Fall. In, uh, in the way we learned it at Sifu Buds, it was only done you know, with the right hand starting and then progressing down the dummy. Okay. So session 1B. Now the good news, a lot of what we're doing in session 1B, which a lot of Wing Chun practitioners think of as session two, is going to be conceptually similar to what we just did with session 1A. Um, it's just starting on the other side. So we, we approach the imaginary dummy the same way, and one, right hand, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11, that goes low, left hand, and 12, and 13. Okay, so again, just like session 1A, session 1B has 13 beats. So that becomes the other nice part, and I'll explain some other benefits to this methodology in a few minutes. Um, like that one rep a few minutes ago where I was breaking it down and I got off on my count, if, if you finish and you know you don't have the right number of beats, then you know you've done it incorrectly. If you keep running them and you're mentally counting them and you always have the correct number of beats, then you're good. So it's a good way to spot check yourself, especially if you're doing it in the air because um, you don't have the benefit of the dummy. Now, and, and I can see a natural question coming out of that. Do we ever get to a point where we just do the whole form? Absolutely. And we don't count it. We just fully express it boom, and move through it. We definitely do that. Um, we also sometimes, uh, for some of the higher sash tests, you might do, um, like I just did for, did I do it or do it with a group? I can't remember. Um, I know I prepped doing the entire form blindfolded. That's another great training modifier. Okay. So anyway, session two, we approach our dummy the same way. We get into our posture the same way. And one, this is my right hand. And two, that's a strike. And three, and four, left hand. And five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine. Right hand comes up as the left hand hooks over for 10. 11, this strikes low, and 12, and 13. Okay, so from here, 
Again, I want to set up and approach the imaginary dummy the same way, even though I don't have a real dummy in front of me. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11, and 12, and 13. So that's going to be your session 1B, okay? And you're, I mean, conceptually, like, let's kind of summarize this, right? You're, no matter which one you're starting with, you're inserting, going into that strike, turning that into your grab with your jut sow. This bong sow is taking you into your first strike. Then you have two transitory beats across the dummy into the other strike, settling here. Then you're wrapping around, setting up for some kind of strike, and then juts out, talks out. And juts out, talks out is how everything is going to end, okay? Or, I mean, most everything is going to end juts out, talks out, right? So when I'm, you know, 1B, right hand inserts, here's my strike, here's my juts out, left, bong out into my strike, two transitory beats across the dummy into my second strike, and then here's me wrapping around into that last strike before juts out, talks out to terminate the session. Okay, session two, and this is gonna be so easy for you, and I'm gonna share a little strategy that I think is really great here. Um, my friends at uh, New Breed Martial Arts in Queens, uh, Sifu Alex and, and Guru Luigi, they're very much my seniors, uh, Simo Jane as well. Um, they're great people, great instructors, and so much my seniors, it's not even funny, but they've been, always been very supportive of me. Um, something they shared with me, when they start students in their Wing Chun program on the dummy, they start with this session, session two, pox out session. Why do they do that? Because there's no footwork, okay? So we're gonna be, we're gonna set up the same way, all right? And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11. There's no footwork. Three pox sows, jop sow, sut sow, lop sow, chung choy, jop sow, sut sow, lop sow, chung, uh, chung choy, jut sow, talk sow. Done. Okay, so 11 beats, right? So, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11. From here, I'm sorry, so I set up first, get, in, get my talks out going, and I'm ready. Right hand goes first, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, and 11. Okay, so that's session two, pox out session, 11 beats. Like I said, once, once you're ready, three, Pox sows, jop sow, sut sow, lop sow, chung choy, jop sow, sut sow, lop sow, chung choy, and then double jut sow, double tox sow, right? Or three slapping hands, this chopping into this knife hand, grab and vertical punch, chop, knife hand, grab into this vertical punch, double jerking hands, or we've talked about, I don't really like that translation, and then tox sow, I come up underneath, boom. Um, and finish. Okay, so um, over the years, when I have five minutes, which should be sufficient, over the years, you know, I've, I've been involved with Sifu Fong now for 15 years, um, trained with him for obviously, <laughs> not very difficult mental math, this is 2020, um, so obviously I started with him for the first time in 2005, at uh, Train with the Legends 2005 at the Inasanto Academy. Started going out to Georgia um, 2000, 
2008. Uh, I think I made instructor in 2010. Not that that was the big thing, but that and honestly, everybody, that was something he decided. I was just kind of going out there, kind of going like, hey, whenever, I mean, that'd be great someday. I'm just trying to keep up with this guy. That was kind of my mentality. Um, and then try to get out there at least once a year. I mean, remember, I spent most of my life in Southern California. I've only been on the East Coast now for two years. Um, so, you know, literally have to fly across the country. So most years I would, I would get two or three public seminars at the Inosanto Academy, fly out for one seminar, one instructor's conference with him, and then, you know, train on my own and have my own students. And, and it's worked out fine. Um, what I've always admired about Sifu, he's very innovative. He's not afraid to innovate new ways of training. And so I'm going to share something with you. Um, these are obviously, if you, I mean, come in, they're kind of rusted, but these are my Bart Cham Do that I think I bought at my very first instructor seminar at his place in 2005. Um, one year, the instructor's homework at every conference, he has three instructor conferences a year, was to learn the, the dummy form in the air while using your Bart Cham Do. So, for example, session one and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13. 13 set, right? So it's the same idea conceptually. Session two and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13. Session two and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine, and 10, and 11, okay? So um, what I'm trying, and we did that for many years, and then after so many years, he was like, yeah, you can still do that. We're just, that's not homework anymore. He had, he had moved on to some other things that he wanted us to like supplement our learning with, okay? Um, so to kind of wrap this up, um, at least as far as our regular Monday public complimentary Wing Chun class. Um, so I already talked about Selim Tao, Chum Q, where you start your learning for the wooden dummy. Then as you're moving blue through purple, you're finishing up Chum Q, you're finishing up um, you're, you're gradually adding dummy set. Like, I think he believes, he, so he believes, he starts with, um, the same three sessions that I just taught you, if I'm not mistaken, 1A and 1B and session two. That's the first time. And then he'll add in, you know, maybe two or three sessions for multiple sash levels until you have all of it. Um, and you're from you're you're always doing rounds, right? You have the gate rounds. Yeah, um, you're always doing gate rounds for sashes yellow through brown. Later, you're doing gates, and you're doing one sixty forty tie boxing round, and you're doing three one minute grappling rounds. Now, people hear that. And they go, well, what does that have to do with Wing Chun? Well, nine-tenths of your exam is going to be Wing Chun. And then at the very end, you have something super physical um, that you kind of come through. So there's a little bit of a feeling of a crucible. All right. Um, once you're done with brown sash, red, the red sash test is to do um, the, the first two empty-handed forms, the, the two weapon form, there is another form. That's not the Bart Cham Do, the butterfly knife form. There is a butterfly knife form, the six foot staff form, 
Um, so you're doing five and the dummy. So, so red sash, Selim Tau, Chum Q in its entirety, um, the two weapons, the Bark Cham Do and the staff, and then the dummy. And then black sash is you're doing all six forms from memory, and they should, I mean, they should look fairly good at red sash by black sash. You should have it down. So BUG is the final, the sixth and final. It's an empty handed form in Wing Chun. Okay, so, um, you know, thank you everybody very much. Uh, th these, these Wednesday Wing Chun classes have been an awful lot of fun. To formalize your training relationship with me and earn rank anywhere in the world, and then later to um, continue your online training with me, please go to stoopsomalc.com. All right, Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and Dog Brothers, Japanese, and uh, yeah, Mo oh, did I say something else? Monday Wing Chun, I, I, oh, I said, did I say Wednesday? I think I've been doing that a lot lately, thinking I said, so this, thanks very much. Um, I think I kept doing that in kids class too. I was saying, I was thinking I was saying one thing <laughs> and saying something else. So thanks, Conrad. So anybody, and anyways, everybody, these Monday public Wing Chun classes have been a, an awful lot of fun. And I think there are 15 or so, you know, waiting for you that we've done over the last uh, 15 weeks or so. So thanks very much. I'm going to end this recording, everybody.